Dun 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 Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna be annoying anymore. No, just kidding. That's kind of my shtick, isn't it? Let's talk today about the Chicago Bulls. And the last dance, as everybody said it was. Oh, can you really have a last dance when you didn't win any championships? Who really knows? Okay, sorry. I'm gonna stop being annoying. Just kidding. That's my shtick. Today, what I wanted to do was talk about the sentiment that I've slowly seen roll out there as to whether or not the Edmonton Oilers are in their last dance era. Now, the reason we're talking about this is because of a post made by Big Head Hockey on Twitter. They posted this graph yesterday. Not even really a graph, it's just four names. Here are the Edmonton Oilers that are on expiring contracts. Leon Dreisaitl, Evan Bouchard, Jeff Skinner, and Ryan McLeod. Is this a year? The Oilers' last dance? Now, if you're a hockey fan like me, and you don't know anything about basketball, then you might be thinking, okay, what the hell's that? Last dance? Why is Michael Jordan in a thumbnail? Well, to save you some trouble, The Last Dance was one of the very popular television programs that had aired during the initial COVID-19 pandemic in the 2020 era. You know, where everybody was talking about Tiger King, everybody was talking about that, everybody was talking about toilet paper, people eating bats, and it was The Last Dance. And now I'm hit with a wave of nostalgia because I realize that those days were four years ago. Ay ay ay, we're getting old, dude. I was a young 20-year-old full-time YouTuber at that time. Now I'm still a full-time YouTuber, but whatever. The Last Dance was noted because it was the last time that the Chicago Bulls could run it back. Winning multiple championships with multiple stars, this was a team on the cusp of greatness, but the question was, could they do it one more time? We had already made one Last Dance video with Austin Matthews, and that was like a thing. Oh, could the Maple Leafs be in their last dance, even though they never made it past the first round? Like, it was kind of crazy when you think about it. And for the Oilers, I guess you could say that similar sentiments could exist here. But then again, the last dance was super important because it was like, you know, the last time this team could run it back. They were a championship caliber team in the 90s. And the Oilers went to the finals once. Now, they went to the third round two times. The last time they did so, before going to the finals, they got swept against Colorado. The thing is, hockey is hard. It is very difficult to win consistently in hockey. You don't see teams do that unless they are from Florida. That's like the only caveat. If you're from Florida, then okay, you can get yourselves a dynasty, you can get yourselves multiple Stanley Cup Finals appearances in a row, maybe even multiple cups. But every other team that is not in Florida, that does not have that state tax advantage, it's very difficult to string together consistent success in the playoffs. So while I don't doubt the idea, you know, the last dance, you've got a competitive group of guys, some of their contracts are expiring soon, you may not see a good chunk of them return to the team in future years. While that sentiment does exist, at the same time, the magnitude of success certainly is not the same when you compare it to the Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan. Like, okay, maybe Connor McDavid and the magnitude of how good he is compared to everybody else could be seen as the equivalent to Michael Jordan's statistical and overall dominance across the NBA in that time frame. But, you know, it's kind of just apples to apples, goats to goats. It's pretty similar, and it's an easy conclusion to make here. But nevertheless, going back over to the tweet, the question asks, is this upcoming season the Oilers' last dance? A lot of these replies are all over the place. This season was the last dance, off the bar tune says. Another comment says, Bouchard and Drysaddle got huge raises, so it will definitely be tougher to have depth next year if Drysaddle resigns. This is definitely an important year for the Oilers. This is the beginning of the biggest dynasty since the 80s, so no. Yeah, this is the last dance. They got lucky last year. One of the worst tweets of all time, to be honest. So you can see that people are very mixed as to whether or not this last dance situation actually does apply to the Edmonton Oilers. But a lot of it is going to depend on what happens with these big names. How much does Leon Dreisaitl re-sign for? He could realistically get more money than Connor McDavid for a season, because Connor McDavid's going to have to re-sign the year after. And no one would bat an eye. 
Drysada could get more money than Matthews, and nobody would bat an eye. Evan Bouchard could get more than $10 million a year. He can get Kale McCarr money. He can get Roman Yossi money. Evan Bouchard is that dude. And it's not necessarily because he's the best defenseman, quote-unquote, like he's the best at playing defense, but he happens to get so many points offensively. He is arguably the best offensive defenseman the Oilers have had since Paul Coffey. And look, there's a lot to like out of Bouchard's game. It's just 10 million bucks. While it may be uncomfortable to think about, it may be the only appropriate number in this case if the Oilers want any chance of keeping him around. So overpayments, whatever, you could debate whether or not that's the case, but it doesn't change the fact that that's likely the number. Bouchard, Dreisaitl, $25 million in salary cap space taken up there, 24 to 25-ish. Does this give you the opportunity to maintain a stable core of depth players around them and continue to succeed? Is it even valid to call this similar to the last dance? You know, it would be the last dance if the Oilers made the finals again this upcoming season. Dreisaitl actually goes off in the finals instead of, you know, disappears. And then the Oilers win. They do it convincingly. They win in five games. And the next season comes around and people are wondering, oh, is Connor McDavid going to stay? Is Connor McDavid going to leave? And then, what? That's the real last dance. Back-to-back -back Stanley Cup finals appearances, a Stanley Cup win, and then a potential defining moment for a superstar to choose his own adventure and go over to the Washington Wizards or go over to MLB. Who really knows? Um, okay, Michael Jordan comparisons. We got to stop those. The last dance I don't think really applies to any situation in hockey in the past 20 years because that combined aura of desperation and already determined success does not exist here. The Oilers didn't win the cup. They didn't win multiple cups. And they could still have themselves an opportunity at keeping some of their guys. So the last dance might be a little bit dramatic, but it makes for a fun and entertaining video, so I wanted to go out there and bring this one up here on the internet. Connor McDavid, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to whether or not he's going to stay or he's going to go. What are your thoughts on Leon Draisaitl? Thoughts on Evan Bouchard? We haven't even talked about Skinner and Ryan McLeod, but I'm going to assume Jeff Skinner is going to be very good with Edmonton. I'm going to assume he adds another element of goal-scoring potential to this forward core that is different from the on-the-rush dangling by everybody kind of style that Connor McDavid has. It's different from the pure sniper one-timer option on the far right that Leon Dreisaitl has. It's different from the crash the net front presence garbage crease guy Zach Hyman style. It's kind of a mixture of Nugent Hopkins sniping ability and positional one-timers. Jeff Skinner is a very versatile scorer and I think he'll be fine in Edmonton, but his contract is only one year long. Is this the real Last Dance situation? How much does Ryan McLeod end up making after this upcoming season? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Oilers, Michael Jordan, the Chicago Bulls, and everything in between, and whether or not the Oilers do have themselves a big desperate sort of attitude heading into the 24-25 season to win a championship and to get things done and finally bring the Stanley Cup back to Canada. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishashros 99. And... Bye.